Casablanca, the place chosen for the latest Roosevelt-Churchill meeting. Casablanca were not so many weeks ago the plans made at the previous Roosevelt-Churchill conference had been carried out, though not without opposition and some destruction, witnessed the damage to the 35,000-ton French battleship Jean Bart. There was a powerful concentration of war leaders for the conference, of course, and this is the hotel where many meetings were held and many offensive plans made. Arriving on the scene is Vice Admiral Lord Louis Mountbatten, Chief of Combined Operations. General Sir Alan Brooke, Chief of the Imperial General Staff, with Field Marshal Sir John Dill, Head of the British Joint Staff Mission in Washington. Admiral of the Fleet, Sir Dudley Pound, the First Sea Lord. These men, who as leaders of Navy, Army and Air Force, British and American, work with the President of the United States and Great Britain's Premier, these men are responsible for the technical planning of Anglo-American attack in 1943. General Marshall, seen with Sir Alan Brooke, is the American Army Chief of Staff. Lieutenant General Arnold, U.S. Army Air Force, equals Air Chief Marshal Sir Charles Portal, Chief of the Air Staff. Admiral King is the American opposite number of our first Sea Lord. And here with Lord Louis is Lieutenant General Somerville commanding the General Services of Supply, the United States Army. For 10 days, together with Roosevelt and Churchill, they discussed our offensive strategy for this year in which it's intended to hit the enemy smashing blows on new fronts. Between conferences, the Premier found time to visit ships in the port. You'll notice he was Air Commodore Churchill on this occasion. <laughs> Another glimpse of him with his son, Randolph. General Alexander, followed by Air Chief Marshal Sir Arthur Tedder, was among those who took an opportunity between sessions of inspecting an auxiliary warship. Aboard this vessel, a number of Wren officers carried out their important communications duties throughout the conference, and a 10-day conference that includes all the British and American chiefs involved a lot of work for all concerned, you can be sure of that. President Roosevelt employed whatever spare time he had in inspecting the growing strength of United States forces. It naturally takes time to transfer armies and their supplies from America and Britain to Morocco and Algeria, but great strides have been taken since the original leap into North Africa. The president, anxious naturally to assess the effective strength and the bearing of American units already there, made a lengthy tour in a jeep. When he paused for a snack, he found the menu not bad at all. Boiled ham and Swedes, fruit salad and coffee. Afterwards, large numbers of men marched past the president, who is reported to have been very well satisfied with everything he saw. There were two main objects of the Churchill-Roosevelt meeting. Apart from preparations for the 1943 offensive, they wanted to solve North African political problems. General Giraud met and talked with General de Gaulle and with President and Premier. To judge by the amount of handshaking that went on while the newsreel cameras were turning, it might seem that all political problems have been solved. But let's hope at any rate that if there are any remaining difficulties holding up French unity, they will soon be eradicated. Anyway, with the main results of the Casablanca conference, everyone seems to have been delighted. Roosevelt and his staff, including Harry Hopkins, top left, and Averill Harriman, right. And the combined British and American staffs, evidently quite pleased with the way plans for this year have been worked out. And how about the two principles? the men whose latest meeting has caused such mirth in the German press. The British and American press remembers quite clearly all that resulted from the last meeting of these two men. Our own press, including men like Ward Price, among an absolute galaxy of war correspondents, are...